Just in this video, we are going to see about the basic uh, of microprocessor architecture. So, which microprocessor we are going to see is 8085 Intel uh, Corporation microprocessor we are going to see. And that is what we are following in our service. So, uh, we are going to study in whole of this uh, semester uh, about the 8085 microprocessor. Only. So, 8085 microprocessor it is developed by intel corporation and it is an 8-bit microprocessor which means you can store uh, 8 bit of information at a time so it has 16 address lines hence it can address 2 power 16 so 16 address lines means uh, so it is 2 power 16 this much of information you can separately address that is 65536 if you take a memory like a page Imagine you like a, a paper or a page, a page in a paper, then you can store 8 bit information in each line. So, how many lines? That is for this 65,536 lines, where each line consists of 8 bit of information. That is what is mean by 8 bit microprocessor. And since it has 16 address lines, it can individually address 65,536 line that is nothing but 64k memory and it is a 40 pin uh, 40 pin configurations it has a the power supply is plus 5 voltage and it can operate between the speed is between 3 megahertz to 5 megahertz single phase clock it generates an 8 bit io address input output address hence it can access 2 power 8 that is 256 individual IO ports it can access. It has that provision. Then it supports five hardware inputs. They are all trap, ROC 6.5, 5.5, 4.5, I and INTR. It's nothing but intro. And it, it supports the DME. So to say that this is a uh, way micro system. Uh, Microprocessor, 8800 microprocessor. You see that here, these are all the chips which I have we were seeing in the last uh, video. That is uh, IC. We call it as integrated chips where uh, millions and millions of uh, logical gates are designed inside. So, in that single chip, we have so much of logical gates. So, like this, and this is the LED output. You, you key in the input as in hex code that is nothing but first initially you will write a program in mnemonics like move a comma r then the equivalent uh, hex code you will write down and then that hex code you will enter here that is what we call it as assembly language which in turn so when you key in this you can see that in this uh, led and when you execute this you can see the output also here so the input, the data, everything will be stored in the temporary register, which is given in terms of this chips. So this is the what old uh, microprocessor that is still we are studying now as a base. Now we have the latest microprocessor which I have taken from the internet. This is a picture that is only this thing. Uh, so if we see the uh, logical design functional block diagram of an 8085 this is what so here we have the control signal block this total together called control signal block and these are all the temporary register accumulator and this is the arithmetic and logic unit which consists of along with the flip flops and here we have the temporary registers say h l d e b c w z these are all the temporary register where each register can store 8 bit of information and this is another one, six stack pointer, which is a 16 bit. And this is a program counter. This is again a 16 bit register. And this is also address, the increment and decrement address. Lock. This is also again another 16 bit register. And H and L individually, they can, they can store 8 bit and can act as an 8 bit register. Combined together, together also they act as a 16 bit register also. And then all are connected with this buses that is communication line and we call this as system bus so if if that pulse 
take uh, tra transfer the address of the memory then we call it as an address bus when they carry the data we call it as a data bus and control signals control bus so these are all the control signals and this is also the interrupt control signals and uh, this is a serial io control signals so all these things externally act on the uh, all the registers so this is only a functional block diagram we are going to see each and every all these parts separately so this can be divided the 8085 architecture uh, consists of the following blocks that is register array which is nothing but this is the register array. When I say register array, this is that. That W is that B, C, D, E, H, L, stack point of program. All these are said to be. They are all used for storage. When I say register, they are used for storing of information. So we call it as a register array group. Then ALU and a logical group. That is arithmetic logic and logical group is nothing but flip flops. Because based on the flip flop setting, uh, the decisions can be taken. So it comes under, this also comes under the arithmetic and logical group. An instruction decoder and machine cycle encoder, timing and third control security. Instruction decoder is when an instruction is, as we have seen here, when I enter a hex code, that will be converted into respective binary code and it will be understood what is mentioned in that particular code, whether move A comma B or add A, like that. So it first it has to understand the meaning of the uh, machine code. So that's what instruction decoder will decode and it understand and actual what does what has to be done that will be done by this instruction decoder. So and machine cycle encoder, it is nothing but for executing the particular instruction, this is needed. And timing and control signal in order to execute everything synchronously, we need timing and control circuitry. So the next one is interrupt control group. That is what we have seen here. These are all the interrupt control group. Then serial IO control group. This is nothing but this part. So control timings, this is a temporary array and these are all the logical unit uh, where accumulator, temporary register, flag, flip flops, all these things include. And this is the instruction decoder. It gets the instruction. The one, the instruction will be taken and placed in the machine that will be decoded by the instruction decoder and it what has been uh, set in that particular instruction that can that will be executed by this machine cycle so now we will see one by one what is a register array what are all the things in a register array there are 14 registers here 12 registers or 8 bit register and 2 or 16 bit registers generally and all these things are mostly available for the user to do Program. So the user can access the uh, content of P register, C register, and so on. That is what I mean by is user accessible. So they are classified into four types. First, all these 14 registers are classified into four types. They are all general purpose registers. That is B, C, D, E, H, L. That is B, C, D, E, H, L. These are all available to the user. Whereas W and Z, they are said to be temporary, but they are not available for the user. In the instruction code, instruction set, these two registers are not used. It will be internally used by the CPU to store temporary values. Then general purpose registers, accumulator, instruction register and flag register. That is accumulator, instruction register and flag. So all these things comes under the special purpose registers. Then temporary register. As I said just now, I said W and Z and temporary data registers that is here these two wz and this temporary registers then pointer register and special purpose which is nothing but program counter and stack pointer why it is called pointer register is they point to the memory address program both program counter and stack pointer they point to a memory address so they are called pointer registers right We'll see more on the general purpose registers. They are all uh, general purpose registers, B, C, D, E, H, L. They are all 8-bit registers. That is B, C, D, E, H, L. These are all general purpose registers. And they are all 8-bit registers. They can be used as 16-bit. As I said, 
can be combined together b c b c d e h l so they combine together they act as a 16 bit register pairs they are used to store intermediate data and result so these are all available for the programmer to write some coding they can access the data inside these registers for that the instruction set provides the uh, proper instruction uh, in order to manipulate these data which are present in these registers hcl can be used to hold data as well as memory data in this in the, all these six registers this hcl can store memory address also it can be act as a pointer to the memory as well as they can store data so while coming to the programming code more uh, more information about these things will be discussed now the special purpose registers accumulator instruction register and flag register so accumulator is an 8 bit register where all the say for example when you are adding something when you are subtracting everything the accumulator will be considered as an inbuilt that is even if you do operations with other registers the all the in uh, all the temporary results will be uh, without explicitly saying it will be stored in the accumulator so all the alu operations are performed with reference to the content of the accumulator so for example when i say add b means add the content of register b with the accumulator and store the result in accumulator that is the meaning even if it is not explicitly said as add a comma b you will say only add b so when you say add b or add c whatever it is the mentioned register content will be added with the accumulator and the result also will be stored in the accumulator that is what i mean by without explicitly saying the accumulator will be involved in almost all the operations of the alu so result of an operation is again stored in a and it store 8 bit data during the io transfer then instruction register here when an instruction is fetched from memory uh, where the program will be stored it will be stored in the memory so from the memory uh, 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 one by one instructions will be fetched and it will be put in the instruction register so then transfer to the decoder first it will be loaded into the instruction register and then it will be sent to the instruction decoder where the decoder is responsible for understanding what is mentioned in the instruction and then the respective control signals will be initiated and the, uh, the said uh, instruction will be carried over so it is not programmable instruction register means it is not programmable means it is not available to the user but it is inbuilt uh, whatever you do then the automatically the instruction any any information transferred from the memory that instruction will be placed in instruction register but it is not a uh, user is user cannot access the uh, information in the instruction register as well as they cannot uh, touch the instruction register and it is used by the microprocessor internally in special purpose registers it is nothing but flag bit register where we have five flags if you say 8 bit register it, all the registers are 8 bit almost except few so where you can consider a flag register to be a 8 bit register where it consists of five flags a flag registers there are five flags here for example d7 here d0 represent the carry which means uh, this is for a carry and this uh, does not mean anything and d2 is for parity bit and uh, d4 is for auxiliary carry and d6 for zero bit zero flag and d7 for sign bit so what do you mean by all these things when you add two data carry may be produced in the eighth bit when you add two data a carry may be produced in the eighth bit so in that case if there is a carry then this carry bit will be set or if the result of addition or subtraction of any two operations will not generate any carry then this will be zero then parity whether whether the system is following an even parity or odd parity based on that the parity bit will be set auxiliary carry when you add two data uh, after the when there is a carry produced in the fourth bit and it will be transferred to the fifth bit then that is called auxiliary bit so whether addition of two bit the two eight bit data if the fourth bit addition of two data produces some carry then this bit will be set then zero if the result of any operation 
whether addition or subtraction, if it results in a zero, then the zero bit will be set. Then sign bit, based on the negative or positive, the sign bit will be set. So just whatever I have said is explained in this. So C or C1 is set when an arithmetic operation generates a carryout. Otherwise, it is a zero. Parity, P equal to one. If the result of an A operation has an even number of ones in A, equal to zero if the number is odd. Then auxiliary carry, similar to carry, but A C equal to if that is a carry from D3. That's what I said. D3 bit to D4 bit. So here D4 bit, one, two, three, four, fourth bit. If you say from zero, it is a third, uh, but actually it is a fourth bit, okay, from D3. So that's what we have seen. So D3 to D4, then actually carry set. Else, it will be set to zero. And it is not available for user. Because it is internally set, uh, is it zero? Is it equal to one if the result in A is zero, zero? Else, zero. Otherwise, sign bit. S equal to one, that sign bit will be set to one if D seventh bit of A is one. Indicating that the result is negative. Else it equal to zero, indicating it is a positive. Then temporary registers. It consists of the following temporary W, Z, and temporary data register. And these two are eight, and this is also an eight bit register. They used to hold temporary data. When there is an execution, they will be holding the temporary data. And these are also not available to the user. It is handled by the microprocessor internally. Then pointer register for special purpose, that is program counter and stack pointer. These two are 16-bit register because they are pointing to the memory. Already we have seen in our, when introducing the, the microprocessor address line, I already told you uh, the microprocessor, what we are studying in this is 8085 and it consists of 16 address line, which means uh, there are 65,536. If you make it two power 16, 65,536 individual lines can be accessed. So that is what we are saying here. So what happens? Yeah. Program counter. They point. That is why it is a 16 bit register because the memory address is 16 bit. So stack pointer, both stack pointer and program counter, they point to a memory. Uh, they have the address of the memory. So they hold the address of the data present at the top of the stack. The stack pointer, it points to the top of the stack. Okay, that already you have studied in your data structure. Where, what is the top of the stack? Uh, when you store the data, that is, it always grows. And always, uh, top is nothing but points to the top of the stack, the data on the top of the stack. So when you say the memory, memory itself is a, Stack. You can you can consider it as a stack of the stack. So when there is a functions and all uh, the and then when there is a subroutine and all memory stack is used. Uh, not only that, when there is a context switch and the program switches from one uh, flow to another flow in in the same program, then the intermediate result will be pushed into the stack and then they will be popped up. In that case, the stack pointer is used to point to the top of the stack. So hold the content of the program counter when subroutines are used. So we will be studying all these things, uh, how the subroutines are uh, called and uh, how the program counter is used for storing all these things that we will be studying when during the programming. But just follow, the stack pointer is used for uh, pointing the memory address. So uh, when there is a subroutine call or an interrupt, pushing the return address on your jam and retrieving it after the operation is complete to come back to its original location. For all those things, the stack point is used. Program counter. The program counter is also pointing to the memory address, but the difference between the stack point and the program counter is, it is used during the execution of the program. It always, uh, whatever mentioned in that address, in the program counter, only that address will be, uh, only the date instruction from that address will be taken and executed as the next instruction means the program counter always point to the address of the next instruction to be executed. So it contains the address of the next instruction to be executed after fetching the instruction. It is automatically incremented by one. So for example, five lines are the program counter initially points to one. And when the first instruction is being executed, automatically the program counter points to the second line. Okay, because second line is the next address. So when the second, uh, uh, second line is taken, 
now it points to the third line so it is incremented by one so automatically it points to, there is no need for explicit program coding automatically the program uh, that address will be incremented and this is main phase and very important role in maintaining the sequence of execution